All right then, gang. So I think now is a good time to implement some kind of authentication system into our application. So to do that, we'll be using Firebase Auth. Now, Firebase Auth is a free authentication service which uses JSON web tokens, and it's tightly coupled with other Firebase services like the Firestore and Functions. So they're all going to work well together. Now, when we sign up a new user using the Firebase Auth service, the Auth service will take in certain bits of information about that user and store them, not in our Firestore database, but as part of the authentication service separately. And that information will be something like this, the email, it will generate a user ID, a photo URL if we want one, a display name if we want one. Now, if we're using email and password to sign up, we don't have to supply a photo URL or a display name. We just have to supply an email and obviously the user's password. But we can store these extra bits if we want to. But we can't just store custom properties, things like the first name or the last name or their initials. Now, to do that, we're going to have to store that inside a user's collection in our Firestore database. So what will happen every time someone signs up using Firebase Auth, we're going to store the email over here and we'll generate a unique ID for that user as well. Now, if we want to store the first name and last name, etc., then what we're going to do is create a Firestore document inside a user's collection for that user. So we'll take this user ID generated by the Firebase authentication service and we'll create a new document and the ID of that document will be corresponding to the ID generated by Firebase Auth. Now, previously, these IDs have been randomly generated when we've added a new document, but we can override that behavior and we can set the ID ourselves. So that's what we'll do. The ID of each document, each user in this Firestore collection will correspond to the ID generated automatically by the Firebase Auth service. Then in each one of these things over here, each one of these users documents, we can store information about that user. So for example, we can store the initials, in this case, NN, or the first name, Net, or the last name, Ninja. And we could store other things if we wanted to, like the email, again, in here, just so we've got everything in one place. So this allows us now to add custom properties to our individual users. So we're storing data kind of in two places, the email over on the auth service, and then everything else over in a user's collection inside a document for that user. So that's roughly how we're gonna structure our users in this application. But before we do any of that, we have to actually enable authentication inside our Firebase project. So let's do that now. So then over in your Firebase project, what you wanna do is head to authentication on the left over here. And then we have to set up a sign-in method. So we have all of these different signing methods by phone, Google, Facebook, Twitter, etc. even anonymous authentication. What we're going to concentrate on is this one at the top, email and password. You can see they're all disabled by default. So if you click on this pencil icon, we can enable this and press save. We don't need to do this at the minute. This is for passwordless signing. I'm not going to cover that. We are going to use a password. So let's save that and we can see now that this is enabled. Now, if you go to users up here in the tabs, we can see all of our current users. We have none at the minute, but let's just add a test user. Let's say test at the net ninja.co.uk and then a password test one, two, three, four and add that user. So now we have this user. We've not stored any additional information about this user and we've not stored any information about this user inside the database either but we will be ultimately creating a user's collection over here and adding in a document which corresponds to that user we just created and for any subsequent user that then signs up to our application. So we're gonna start that process in the next video.